is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Uh, uh, yeah, John says anybody that stepped the way I want no part of, and um, I'd be. I'd so be, you're even saying guys that didn't play college football this year, you don't want them on your NFL team drafted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Rousseau, I have a problem with Rousseau anyways because he's a one year wonder. So that that to me is as good as he is. I'm not I'm not spending a, a high first round pick on Gregory Rousseau. There is no way I would do that. No way I would do that. Not because he stepped out. It's because he's a one-year wonder. I'm not uh, – the one-year wonders are normal fails. The only guy that succeeded is the dude that blew out his fingers, Jason Pierre-Paul. And that and that some bitch just changed the linebacker and been kicking ass at linebacker. Oh, yeah, if he stays, yeah. If he stays and had a good year, he yeah, I agree. He could He could have been a top-five pick. I agree with that. George Arthur giving us a little love on the Super Chat. Thank you, George. It says, Aloha, Big O. Sorry, it's been a long while. Happy New Year. Our Dolphins will continue to kick ass. Love you guys. And this chat fins up. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. As always, we're keeping it locked. What price would Julio be uh, be asking for? Fifteen plus million, easy. That's just the way he is, dude. If he wants to take a lot less and take incentives, then I would take the chance with him. Big O, how would you compare the impact Wake had on our defense to Agba? Different players. Agba's better against the run than Wake. He's a bigger player than Wake, actually. He can actually hold the point better than Wake. Wake was not a great run stopper. Wake was better. Wake was a better. Wake was a great pass rusher, but not a run stopper. So Agba right now is a better player than Wake because he's a two-way player. He helps you in two areas. Whereas you know it, it got to a point with Wake where he kind of became a a, a third-down specialist basically and a pass rush guy. But he was never. Remember, he was kind of. He, he was a, a one-trick pony, man. But he wasn't yeah. a. He's not a big defensive end, actually. You know, he what was I mean? a run liability. Yeah. He was on run. They ran right at him. They always ran out right yeah. at him. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I would say Agba is a better play overall player, but Wake. I mean, we can we can never put Agba in the Wake Wake category of pass rusher. You know, there's a guy that got nine, ten sacks all the damn time. You know, so it's. It, there's how can you slam Wake when Ogba has not proven that yet? This is his first nine sack season. So Wake has to do, I mean, uh, Ogba has to do a lot more in the pass rush situation to then be considered a better player than Wake. But he does have the overall, as an overall player, he does have that right now better than Wake. But I'd still take Wake because it's years and years of, of great pass rush. And that's where you got to lean to him in that. But if I needed a complete end, I'm going to take Wake. Oh, I'm going to take Agba this year over what Wake normally does. Okay? The but, Spanish music in the background, John, by the way, says it's his favorite song. I, I, I would imagine so. Why not? It's incredible music. Uh, Jay Walsh says, I want Suell. If he's available, but we could still take pits if we wanted to, I think. They're going to be at three, brother. They're, they're going to be able to take a, a lot of people. You know, it's only like a quarterback, and maybe two quarterbacks. I doubt it. But a quarterback and a lineman or a quarterback and a receiver or a quarterback and an end or something. It's only two players that are going to go before Miami. So Miami is going to have the pick of the litter for a lot. I mean, this trade, Wow. You, and you gotta, you gotta knock it out of the park. Whoever you pick at three, man, you need to, you need to make this trade count, like big time. Okay, you you need to make sure that the number three pick that you get, he's better than Tunsil. Okay, do that. Get a guy that's better than Tunsil, whatever position he plays, but he's better than Tunsil. 
That way that trade looks incredible already. Another thing to think about, like we've talked with all the quarterbacks that are probably going to slide up into the first round, that means those second round, there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to push sure. back with those two second-round picks. For sure. Miami's going to have three of the top 35, 36 picks in the draft, man. That's pretty fun. A lot, uh, of, know, lot of talent going to be out there. That's going to be fun. When we're doing our show in Cleveland for the draft, we'll be able to uh, – we, 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 our breaks won't be that long in between picks. I like it. I like it. That's a good thing. Uh, Jay Walsh uh, says, I mean, uh, later in the draft, taking pits, trading up for him like 13th, like the fourth pick. I get you. There's a lot of good players, my brother. Let's wait till we get to the. Let's wait till we get closer to the draft. We know who's declared. We know all the dirt already at that point. By the time we get to the draft, we'll know who uh, who has some suspensions and problems in school. We'll know who has some medical history. All of that stuff. Who's and wearing then, bong masks? Yeah, who's wearing bong masks? All those things, and then we can figure it out on on where we go. But right now. I don't like to make any of those determinations at this point. I'd rather get the information uh, first, and then let's find out where everything, you know, that way we could kind of figure everything out. You know what I'm saying? We still don't even know if we're going to pick a three yet. You know? So, who, who knows? We'll, we'll see. We'll know after Sunday. I know. I know. Right? Yep. I mean, yep. there's no Monday night game, so everybody's done on Sunday. We'll know exactly where we're at. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. Hour number two is coming up here.